band standing all over the sanctuary. We welcome you to this June 30th service right before July 4th, America's Independence Day. And uh, maybe they don't do this in a lot of uh, religious uh, institutions across America, but by the help and grace of God, what we're fixing to do, we want to always do, all right? And that is to salute the United States flag. We're going to salute the Christian flag, and then we're going to salute the Bible. In that order, our gentlemen are coming. They will lead us, and we ask you to kindly participate and show you respect and honor for the United States of America and the Christian flag. Brother Randy, if you will. Let's pray together. Lord, we appreciate what this holiday represents. And we appreciate, Lord, the freedom that we have in the United States of America. Lord, even to this day, God, we realize, Lord, it was the put on the sign that, Lord, it is the home of the free because of the brave. Thank you. Thank you so much for those that have been brave. Lord, and paid the ultimate price, the cost to give us our freedom here in the United States of America. Give us a great day here in the house of God. Thank you for every person that's here. We ask you to bless every family, every individual. Draw us near unto you all day long, and we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remain standing. Here's what I want us to do. Choir is going to do one in just a moment. But right now, right at this juncture, cross the aisle. Tell somebody, thank God for freedom, and happy 4th of July, all right? Everybody. Have our ushers come on in, all right? Our ushers, if you will. All right, our ushers are coming forward while they continue to play. Choir's going to sing in just a moment or two. Yeah, you can bring all the ushers, all right? Getting in 
place. If you're visiting with us and they gave you a visitor's card, please fill that out. We'll greatly appreciate that. Uh, we're going to dedicate a baby in a little bit, so don't, don't let us forget that. But this Wednesday night, we're going to invite each and every one of you to the Wednesday night service, which will be at the Fellowship Hall. And we're going to start at 6.30, all right? 6.30 this Wednesday night, and we'll have uh, lots of food, and uh, it's going to be a fish fry, okay? Flounder filet and then chicken strips for the little one. But I want you to add to that menu that we're going to have slaw, we're going to have a salad bar, and we're going to have onions and vinegar as well. So if you'll add that to the menu, that'll be great. We'll get a head count at the end of the service, but we want to invite everybody, even our visitors, to the fish fry this Wednesday night in the Fellowship Hall. Then we'll go to the ball field, do desserts, uh, watermelon, fireworks right at dark, all right, in honor of America's Independence Day. The ushers are going to serve you. God bless you while they play, and you worship the Lord in your giving, all right? Go right ahead. Number 38. Sing it out. up on the platform and pray, dedicate the offering, then we'll let the squire do another patriotic number, and then we'll go on with the service, all right? Appreciate the ushers, appreciate the safety team being in their place. God bless every one of them. Appreciate the way you guys are dressed, too. You look great. Hey. You look great. I mean that you look great. Brother John, if you'll come pray with us, please, sir. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful, Father, Lord, that you love us and Lord, that you sent Jesus to die for us on the cross, Lord. He came to seek and to save those which were lost. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for uh, all that you do for us. We pray, God, that you will bless this service, Lord. That you'll uh, be with our pastor. Lord, that you'll strengthen him. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll just uh, have your will way here in the service, Lord. Uh, use the offerings to further thy will. We'll love you and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. know the words to America the Beautiful, grab your book now, page 572. Go ahead, 572. Because I want you to turn, everybody's got to sing loud, we're going to be picking you out of the crowd. You know I'm kidding, let's all stand. Why, if you don't know the words, 
All right, turn around and shake somebody's hand, and then we're going to get our singers ready, all right? Shake somebody's hand. Shake a visitor's hand. While their singers are getting ready, I want to say that uh, Brother Shane Ezell up at Ingleside Baptist Church has been in a, uh, what they call a protracted meeting, really. They just had a preacher come, and they've been going each night, each night, and they kept on going, and now they're going into next week. And so we're going to try to go. Brother, uh, Brother Jeremy Chisholm from Traveler's Rest is doing the preaching. We're going to leave about 6.20 tomorrow night, no, no later. We're pulling out of the parking lot at 620. If you want to go to hear uh, the preacher up at uh, Ingleside Baptist Church, and then the Greer Baptist Camp Meeting, probably going to go there Tuesday night. Brother um, Brother Kenny Ball going to be preaching over there, where Brother Joe Arthur is the moderator. So all that's going on this week as well, the Greer Baptist Camp Meeting. And then, of course, we have our big Wednesday night. I want you to bring a lawn chair, and we're going to let the uh, younger folks play softball after the fish fry. Then we'll do Sundays and ice cream. and watermelon on the ball field and fireworks at night, but uh, we will have time for softball and recreation and some uh, enjoyment on Wednesday night. So plan on doing all those good things, all right? This is one of our trios. You worship with them while they sing. There was love at the cross where there was power in the blood that flowed from his veins, and there was joy at his presence when he rose from the tomb. There was life everlasting when he died for me and you. Love My sin is not 
Just cowers to think of the power he lost. Oh, when the cross had its say, and gone are the mornings when fear without warning would win and again have it say now when Satan reminds me of things I regret will I bring up Calvary lest he Oh! <laughs> 
Exactly the truth. Exactly the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Calvary answers for me. Glad it answers for you. Amen. I've been I've been here 17 years. And uh, I've always enjoyed hearing Brother Kevin White sing like a girl. God bless you. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. Great stuff. Amen. Take your Bible, everybody. Go to uh, Romans chapter number 6 this morning. Romans chapter 6. I cover your prayers. God will help us to preach what he's laid on our heart. <clears throat> the Declaration of Independence adopted or signed July 4th of 1776. This Thursday, July 4th of the year 2019, America will be celebrating, if my calculations are correct, 243 years of our independence. Thank God for the freedom that we have in the United States of America. I know it's got its problems, but it's still the greatest country on this world. March the 30th of 1976, at 10.30 p.m. at Tabernacle Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida, God in heaven gave me a declaration of independence set me free from the power of sin set me free from the penalty of sin one day brother Hoster is going to set me free from the very presence of sin I appreciate I appreciate my spiritual declaration of independence and that's what I want to talk about alright I want to preach just for a few moments this morning on freedom in Christ Freedom in Christ. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse number 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Here's what the author said. God forbid how that we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Look, if you will, in verse number 7, everybody. Verse number 7. For he that is dead, watch this, is freed from sin. I wish I had my Wednesday night crown. What do you mean freed? Not, not from committing sin. We're not talking about sinless perfection, but we are talking about freedom from the very dominion and the power of sin in our life. I want you to know, thank God in my salvation, God the Holy Ghost gave me declaration of independence but something inside of me brother Randy allows me the power over the power amen I am free today I have been delivered from the very dominion of sin did you hear what I said I have been delivered from the dominion of sin amen there are millions and millions of American brother Beard that do not have any idea whatsoever what it is to know freedom from the dominion of sin. Look, if you will, in verse number 14, everybody. Verse number 14, if you will. For sin, I like this right here. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Look in verse number 18, everybody. Being then made free from sin. Is that what your Bible said? Ye became the service of righteousness. Look, if you will, in verse number 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Look, if you will, at chapter number 8, everybody. Chapter number 8, and I want you to look in verse number 2. Chapter number 8 and verse number 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus 
hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And John chapter 8 says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 7, and Romans chapter 8 are a trilogy. They go together, and the title of all of that is freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. In chapter number 6, if you're taking notes, you have deliverance from the dominion of sin. Write that down. Deliverance from the dominion of sin. Now, you know and I know that as long as we are on this earth, we are going to be possessed of the Adamic nature of the old man. Can I get an amen right there? Of the old man. There will never be a time, there will never be an experience where you understand and come to realize the eradication of the old nature. Everybody look up here. I said there will never be a time where you will experience an eradication of the old nature. Brother Randy, I'm, I'm saved by the grace of God but I still have the power of inbred sin in me. But aren't you glad, thank God, because of your relationship with the Son of God, you can experience a freedom from the dominion of the old nature, a freedom from the power of sin, a freedom from the servitude of sin. I am a bond slave. I said I am a bond slave. Thank God, Brother David. I am a prisoner of love. And I'm glad, thank God, I'm not a prisoner of the Adamic nature. I'm glad I'm not a bond slave unto the old corrupt nature. But thank God there's somebody living on the inside of me that affords me the power every day of my life to be delivered. I said delivered from the dominion of sin. There's so many people, there are so many people that cannot find freedom. They cannot find freedom. They are enslaved. They are, uh, uh, like, as it were, a ball and chain. Everybody okay? A ball and chain to their sin, to their habits, to their addiction, or to the power of inbred sin that we're all born with. But I am under the firm persuasion and I am so glad it's this way that a child of God is different. I said a child of God is different. Although we retain that sinful nature, it doesn't have to have its way. I said we retain that sinful nature, but it doesn't have to have dominion. It doesn't have to reign. It doesn't have to rule our life. Aren't you glad? Thank God. Aren't you glad for deliverance? And aren't you glad? Thank God for freedom. Amen. I don't know. Maybe I'm just preaching too fast. But uh, I'm not sure I'm getting the message across. There's a lot of Americans. There's a lot of Americans who would like to know the freedom that you know. There's a lot of Americans that would give, well, maybe that's it. They wouldn't give anything they had. They don't understand, Brother Perry. They don't understand, Brother Randy. Right, you don't have to be enslaved to the Adamic nature. God says in Romans chapter number 6 that there is deliverance from the dominion of sin. Somebody said, I can't help myself. I just sin and sin and sin. I got news for you, friend. That contradicts Romans chapter 6. Now, look up here, everybody. It doesn't have to be that way. I said it doesn't have to be that way. I thank God we can experience freedom. And we can experience deliverance from the dominion of sin. I'll get to that in a little bit, all right? In Romans chapter number 7, I told you there are a trilogy. In Romans chapter number 7, if you look at the analogy about marriage there, and I'm not going to preach chapter 7, and the, the similitude of marriage and the Jews breaking off of the law, what he's teaching there, Brother David, is deliverance 
from the demands of the law. You say, what are the demands of the law? The demands of the law are this. You have to do something to be righteous. You have to do something to be righteous. I got news for the law keeper today. I don't have to do anything to be righteous. Thank God it's already been done. Amen. I said it's already been done. And so, Miss Stephanie, not only do I experience a deliverance from the dominion of sin, but Brother Brian, Romans chapter 7, I experience deliverance from the demands of the law. Amen. Oh, I don't have time to preach all that right now. But I'm telling you what, you do not have to keep the law to obtain righteousness. Amen. By the way, if you offend in one point, you're guilty of all. You can't keep the law, Brother Adam. I can't keep the law. But thank God I've been delivered. I said I've been delivered from the demands of the law. Let me just stop and put a commercial in right here. I'm glad I'm not under the Mosaic law because I couldn't keep the Mosaic law. But Romans chapter 7, you know what it in reality teaches? It teaches us to deliver us from the demands of the law. And the demands of the law is perfection. And the demands of the law is you have to keep something to do. You have to do something to be something. I said you have to do something to be something. I don't have to do anything except trust Christ. And when I trusted Christ, thank God he imputed his own righteousness to me. Amen. That's Romans chapter 7. But maybe I ought to really, I ought to really camp out. In Romans 7, verse 14 through 25, because listen to this, everybody, and I don't want you to get quiet on me, all right? I don't want you to get quiet. But in Romans chapter 7, Brother Cam, not only is there deliverance from the demands of the law, but there is deliverance from the daily frustrations of your flesh. Amen. I said there is deliverance from the daily frustrations of your flesh. Paul said, the things that I would do, I don't. The things that I don't do, I do. And on and on and on, he finally threw up his hands in despair and said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Brother Ryder, you know what he said the next verse? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I don't know if you accept what I'm preaching about right now, but I'm telling you there is victory from the daily frustration to your flesh. I said there is victory from the daily frustration to your flesh. I'm saying to you today, you do not have to give in to your flesh. Could I get an amen right there? You do not have to live after the dictates of your flesh. There is victory. Say amen. That's in Romans 7. That's a whole nother message. If you're taking notes, I'm preaching today about freedom in Jesus Christ. And freedom is found in Romans 6 in deliverance from the dominion of sin. Freedom is found in Romans 7, deliver us from the demands of the law. Number three, deliver us from the daily frustrations of our flesh. You say, preacher, are you preaching sinless perfection? Oh, no, friend. Follow me around the rest of the day and follow me around next week, and you'll know automatically I'm not preaching sinless perfection. But I tell you what I am preaching. I'm preaching victory. Say amen. I'm preaching deliverance. Hey, thank God I can shout about Brother Matt. I'm preaching freedom in Christ. Not in myself. Not in myself. Brother Stoltz, not in anything that I am. Not in something I do. But my freedom, Brother Derry, is found in my Savior. It's found in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I just want to tell it to you like this. If I will let him have his way, and thank God I'll have freedom. Amen. Say amen, everybody. I want to say that again. If I will let him have his way, I will experience what Paul is talking about in Romans 6, Romans 7, and Romans 8, and that is deliverance and freedom. Amen. Let me say something right here. Sin is not your friend. Doing wrong, I need to preach. 
Doing wrong is not the norm. Doing wrong does not have to be accepted. Doing wrong definitely doesn't have to be winked at. Doing wrong doesn't have to be glossed over like as if it's nothing. I'm simply trying to tell you that we are possessed of an Adamic nature, of a fallen nature, but Romans 6, Romans 7, Romans 8 said, thank God there is deliverance, amen. Amen, there's freedom from that. There's freedom from that. In Romans chapter 6, there's deliverance from the dominion of sin. In Romans chapter 7, there's deliverance from the demands of the law. In Romans chapter 7, there's deliverance from the daily frustrations of the flesh. Somebody said, I'm tired of failing. I'm tired of failing. I'm tired of letting him down. I'm tired of doing wrong. Well, how tired are you? How tired are you? How much have you? Have, you say, I've had enough of it. Have you really had enough of it? I tell you what, friend. You study your Bible. Hey, by the way, this is our Declaration of Independence. I said this is our Declaration of Independence. You study your Bible long enough and you'll find out something. That there's an abiding principle on the inside of you. I said there's an abiding principle on the inside of you. That'll give you the power over the power. And you can say no to sin. You can say no to wrong. You can say no to wickedness. You can say no to ungodliness. You can say no to debauchery. You can say no to immorality. You can say no to, let me just name it all right you can say no to adultery you can say no to fornication you can say no to gambling you can say no to intoxicating I said intoxicating beverages you can say no to pornography you can say no to lust you can say no to dishonesty you can say no to filthy conversation you can say no friend you can say no to everything that comes up in the Adamic nature if you'll just surrender yourself and yield yourself and submit yourself and let the Holy Ghost have his way. And when the Holy Ghost has his way, he'll give you victory. Amen. Y'all believe that? No, I don't believe a man has to drink all his life. I sure don't. Amen. I don't believe a man has to gamble all of his life. I don't believe a man has to be bound down with pornography all of his life. I don't believe a man has to be bound down with dishonesty all of his life. I don't believe a man or a woman has to be bound down. Hold on, it's going to get quiet. I don't believe a man or a woman has to be bound down by any sinful habit. I said it doesn't matter what the sinful habit is. You don't have to let it have its way in your life. You don't have to let it have sway in your life. You don't have to let it have control in your life. You say, but, but preacher, I want an answer. Do you really want an answer? Do you really want an answer? The answer is found in none other than how God works in the believer's life. I said how God works in the believer's life. And God, Brother Ly, Dr. Lyle, God gives a believer deliverance. Somebody help me. I said God gives a believer deliverance. And God gives a believer freedom. Amen. Y'all with me today? Deliverance? I want to know if you really believe this. I don't know if you really believe this. Deliverance from the dominion of sin. You really believe that? Deliverance, Brother Jonathan, from the demands of the law. Deliverance, number three, from the daily frustrations of our life. The daily frustrations of our flesh. Paul talks about it. And he said, oh, I love the verse. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? In the very next verse, he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know the difference? You know that, let me tell you something, church. Y'all okay? Let me tell you the difference in believers and non-believers. Let me tell you the difference in Christian and non-Christian. A Christian, a believer, has the Holy Spirit 
on the inside of them. The Holy Spirit residing on the inside of us affords us, allows us, gives us, here's a good word, energizes us that we can combat and overcome, overcome everything we were born with. You agree with that? If you're taking notes, you go to chapter 8, it's deliverance from damnation and condemnation. I can't preach chapter 8 right now. You say, would you read from it? Yes, I will. Look at chapter number 8. Look at chapter number 8 and verse number 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Watch this right here. Here's what's happened to, here's what's happened to, to Brian Galloway. Here's what's happened to Randy Spencer Jr. Here's what's happened to David Mabry. Here's what's happened to Yank Dover. Here's what's happened to Kyle Atkin. Here's what's happened to Randy Spencer Sr. Here's what's happened to Mike Mathis. Here's what's happened to Sister Mathis. Here's what's happened to Jack McGinnis. Here's what's happened to Donna, Donna Three. Are you listening, everybody? Here's what's happened right here, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. I think that deserves a hallelujah. For the law of the spirit of life where in Christ Jesus. See, here it is, friend. Here it is, friend. You say, I can't stop drinking. I can't quit adultery. I can't quit fornication. I can't quit gambling. I can't quit pornography. I can't quit, quit wickedness. I can't quit immorality. Here's the difference. You know why you can't quit it? You know why you can't quit it? Because you're missing something. You're missing something. Y'all look, y'all amen to preacher now. You're missing something. And I'll tell you what it is. It's the law of the Spirit of God in Christ, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Because here's what it says, Dr. Love, verse number two, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, everybody look this way. Everybody look this way. I want to illustrate that verse. Can, can I tell you all this? Everybody's not smiling. I don't know why, but everybody's not smiling. I'd hate to know that I'm in this building today and I had an alcohol problem that I couldn't stop. I'd hate to know I'm in this building today I had a drug problem that I couldn't stop. I'd hate to know I was in this building today and I had a dishonesty issue that I couldn't stop. I mean, some of you would rather climb a tree and tell a lie is to stand on the ground and tell the truth. And you've been like that all your life. You've been like, you've been caught in lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. I want to tell you something. A bunch of us was a bunch of little liars too. But thank God Jesus came. I said, thank God the spirit of life in Jesus Christ. Now, Brother Tommy, affords me the power over dishonesty. Somebody ought to help me. Somebody ought to help me preach. Dishonesty fornication, adultery, gambling, I mean mean-spirited, anger, on and on and on and on, pill popping, pot smoking, crack snorting, whiskey drinking, beer guzzling. I want to tell you something. If you're in this building today and any of that stuff controls your life, I said any of that stuff controls your life, I've got the answer for you. Amen, I feel like running the red rooster. I said, if any of that junk controls your life, I've got the answer for you. Amen. He said, well, what is it, preacher? What is it? It's a head-on collision with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let him save you. And if he saves you, thank God he moves on the inside. And when he moves on the inside, Miss Bethany, he gives you deliverance. Everybody all right? He gives you deliverance. Now, i got to read a little bit, all right? I've got a, a liberty, silver dollar. Watch this. Every time I take this coin, flip it in the air, it falls. 
Watch me. I can't wait to get you. I can't wait. I can't wait to give you all this. Every time I take this Liberty Silver Dollar, it falls. It goes to the ground. It don't matter what height, it goes to the ground. It don't matter how high up ascended, how 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 it wants to lift itself up by its own bootstrap, it's still gonna fall. It's still gonna fall. Every time. Say amen. Every time it's gonna fall. But you take this same coin, throw it in the air. If I can do it. Throw it in the air. Catch it before it falls. It doesn't fall any further. You know why? Because the law of the spirit of life in this person's arm has now overcame the law of gravity. I said the law of the spirit of life in this person's arm, I'll do it again, I hope you don't mess it up, in this person's arm has overcome the law of gravity. That doesn't mean the law of gravity is not there. Oh, yes. I said it doesn't mean the law of gravity is not still there. But a greater law, a greater law has taken over. A greater law is holding it up. A greater law has now intervened. I said a greater law has now intervened. I never get rid of, I never get rid of the law of gravity, but the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has kept me from falling. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm preaching about. The only difference in me and the world is another law has intervened. And thank God rescued me. I said rescued me and delivered me. And watch it. And it's holding me up. It's holding me up. It's holding me up. Naturally, naturally, this coin will fall every time. Every time. And but oh God, but Amar, if I take my hand away. The law of the spirit of life. If I take my hand away, Miss Jimenez, the coin's going to fall again. But I got news for you. I got news for you. The hand that held the world is now holding me. And the only difference in me and the world is the law of the spirit of life that's on the inside. And the law of the spirit of life, it delivers me from sin. Amen? It delivers me from sin. and delivers you from sin. In Christ Jesus, a higher law operates. That is the law, verse 2 of chapter 8, of the spirit of life. And watch this. And this law, the law of the spirit of life, sets us free from the lesser law of sin and death. Sets us free from the lesser law. It just sets us free. It doesn't get rid of it. Am I making any sense at all? It doesn't get rid of it. So you're the coin. You're the coin. You're always intended to fall. The law of gravity. You're always going to fall. I'm so glad, Brother Allen. I'm in the hands. I want to say it till I'm possessed. I'm possessed by another law that supersedes the law of sin and death. That's found in me. The law of sin and death's in everybody. Miss Belie, it's in everybody. But there's another law that supersedes and takes control and takes charge. And overpowers, and it's got more power. Hey, hey it's got more power of sin and death. I'm simply trying to tell you, I'm free. 
whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Jesse, I'm free to smoke all the crack that I want to smoke, but I don't want to smoke any. I'm free to drink all the old Milwaukee that I want to drink, but I don't want to drink any. I'm free to, to snort all the reefer that I want to snort, but I don't want to snort any. I'm free to lie any day of the week, even on Sunday, twice on Saturday. But the difference is, the difference is, thank God I'm held up by another law. And guess what? That law, that supersedes the law of sin and death. It makes me not want to lie. Man, you know, you're, 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 you're no better than anybody else. I'm no better than anybody else. You're, 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 you're no better than anybody else. The only good thing in you is he who lives on the inside of you. Now listen to this, listen to this. And were it not for he who lives on the inside of you, now hold on now, you'd be doing the same thing that they're doing on Sunday and twice on Saturday. Amen. Some if it wasn't for God's grace, God's deliverance, some of you'd have been at the juke joint last night. If it wasn't for God's grace, a vacation time of the year, you'd be having your six pack of old Milwaukee and Sliss in the, in the cooler on the bass boat. But you see, Jesus came by. Jesus changed you. Jesus lives on the inside. There's another law. I can't get over it. There's another law. There's another law that overpowers and supersedes the law of sin and death. I'm not boasting. I'm not glorious. I'm just telling you I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get a little rest? Amen. Can I please get a little rest? Are you listening, church? Are you listening? Don't flaunt yourself. Don't get arrogant. Don't get heady and high-minded. Don't look down on people. Don't throw them under the bus. You'd be doing the same thing. And you, by the way, by the way, by the way, you used to do the same thing. You used to do the same thing. But something happened. And you became a Christian. You found out the sin wasn't as pleasurable anymore. You found out it doesn't appeal to you like it used to. Could I get an amen right there? I said it doesn't appeal to you like it used to. Wasted, wasted days and wasted nights. That's exactly what it is. Johnny Paycheck. Wasted days and wasted nights. Getting drunk. Why am I always preaching on liquor? Somebody come up and tell me why I'm always preaching on liquor. Getting drunk. Throwing up everything you had since you're six years old. Hugging a toilet instead of hugging your wife. You, talk, you call that life? You call that life? Sir, I call that bondage. I call that slavery. I feel like preaching. I said, I call that bondage. I feel, call that slavery. He said, well, I'm tired of it. I wish I could change. No, you don't. No, you don't. Are you listening to what I'm preaching right now? You can't change on your own. You can't change on your own. You're just like the coin. You're going to fall every time. You're destined to fall. I said, no matter how high you go, you're going to fall every time. Every time. He said, well, I, I'd really like to get out from under this bondage. I'd really like to break this servitude. I'd really like to get rid of this ball and chain. It's very simple, friend. You've got to let somebody that's got more power than you have. You gotta let him off. Now, what about that song? He reached down just in time. Just in time. I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad I'm a Christian. I'm so glad I know freedom. I'm so glad I know deliverance. I don't have to sin. I don't have to live under the law. Thank God there's no condemnation. Thank God I've been set free. Amen. Say, well, you, you're just a smart aleck old preacher. You're just a Bible thumper. You're just one of them hell fire and damnations. That's yours or his. You're just one of them hell. Why don't you let me have that? I need to keep one of those. I got another coin. Cam gave me another coin. Thank you, Cam. I got another coin up here. I'll get it just to hold it so I can preach with it. Amen. I got another one right here. See, you're just a Bible thumper. You're just a narrow-minded. 
You're just one of them hellfire and damnation people. You just believe drinking's wrong and social drinking's wrong. Pot smoking's wrong and crack cocaine's wrong and pornography's wrong and gambling's wrong and illicit sex is wrong. I said illicit sex is wrong. You just, you just want them to narrow mind. I figured that's what kind of church it was. Well, it's been that way for about 67 years, about 100 years. Hey, friend, you know how narrow we are? We're this narrow, amen. I'm only trying to help you. I'm only trying to help you. You're in bondage and I'm free. You're in shackles and I'm free. You're, 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 you're enslaved and I'm free. I'm a free man. Thank God he signed my pardon. Thank God, Miss Donna, he gave me the Declaration of Independence. I said, Dr. Love, God gave me the Declaration of Independence. Amen. I want you to look at my text verses again, everybody. Man, I'm backtracking, going forward, backtracking, going around the circle. Look at my text verses, everybody. Look at Romans chapter 6. Look, if you will, in verse 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Watch this, Brother Brian. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No, we're not going to turn the grace of God into lascivious. No, we're not because we don't want to. Look at verse 2. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? By the way, I don't have time to preach it this morning, but in this passage, chapter 6, sin is likened to the old man. Verses, verses uh, 6 through 10, it's likened to the old man. In verses 12 through 14, it's likened to an old monarch that we don't have to let reign. And in verses 15 through 23, sin is likened, personified, Brother Mark, to an old master till we do not have to yield obedience but we yield obedience to the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Hey, friend, in Romans chapter 6, it's as if, Brother Adam, that sin was personified as the old man, but they're dead. It's personified as the old monarch, but now he's been defeated. And the old master, but now he's been deposed, amen, or put off or dethroned. Are you listening? Sin does not have to be the old man in your life. Sin does not have to be the old monarch in your life and sin does not have to be the old master. Thank God you are a new creature in Christ and if you will, if you will, you will submit to the principles that's found in Romans chapter 6 then I'm telling you with all the authority of God behind me you will experience freedom. Amen. Did you get that outline? Did you get that? Sin is personified in Romans chapter 6. Miss Bethany as the old man, as the old monarch, and as the old master. And Dr. Love, I don't have to give in to the old man. I don't have to give in to the old monarch. Look at the verse. Don't let it reign. That's the word. Don't let it be king. You don't have to let sin be the old monarch. And then, Brother Derek, it don't have to be the old master. Thank God I've got a new master. And by the way, Put it all through my ear. I'm a prisoner of love. I'm a, I'm a servant that's been bound by love. I love my master, and I don't want to leave. Amen. Oh, friend, are you here today? Are you here? You've got a sex problem. Are you here? and You've got a pornography problem. Are you here? and You've got a fornication problem. Are you here? and You've got an alcoholic beverage problem. Are you here and drugs seem to be crippling your life? Are you here today? Are you here today? And it's just dishonesty. Preacher, I just cannot tell the truth. I can't tell the truth. It's a dishonesty problem. You're in bondage. You're a slave. You're in shackles. You're held in Satan's sway. You and I that are saved by God's grace, the old man is dead. Say it. You got to identify with our union with Christ's death and resurrection. Let me give you this. Let me give you this. How do we find freedom? 
We find freedom, Dr. Love, when we recognize our union with him. How do we find freedom? When we reckon these things to be so, verse 11. How do we find freedom, Brother Ben? When we yield. There it is right there. When we yield, verse 12 and 13. How do we find freedom? With obedience. How do we find freedom? Submissiveness. I'm simply trying to tell you that sin as the old man is dead. I'm simply trying to tell you that sin as the old monarch is defeated and sin as the old master has been dethroned. Amen. It's been deposed. You do not have to live another day in sin's bondage. You don't have to. You don't have to. So I used to be in it. I used to be in it bad. I used to be covered up in it. Preacher, it controlled my life. It, it, it ran my life. That's it, too. It ran like an old monarch. It ran my life. It orchestrated my life. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's only one way to get out of it, friend. There's only one way to find freedom. You, how many of you, how many of you have many, many, many times in the wee hours of the night been on a long travel trip, a long interstate journey, looking for something to listen to, found BBN out of Charlotte, BBN, wherever else it may come out of, and you heard that familiar music, that organ, and all of a sudden, Brother Andy, come on with that great, great, great old program called Unshackled. Man, I've rode down the road, Brother Josiah, many, 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 many a mile, and many, many an occasion, Miss Bethany, listen to Unshackled, sometimes tears in my eyes, thinking, thank God that person's life was a wreck, that person's life was a man, but aren't you glad, thank God they truly were unshackled. I'm telling you today that has a pornography problem. I'm telling you if you've got a lying problem, come on to the panel. I'm telling you if you have a fornication problem. I'm telling you if you have a drug problem. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say it real stern and real slow, real slow. If you have a drinking problem, it's so prevalent. Somebody said, I, I, don't, I, I know it's not true here. I know it's not. If, if, it, if it is, then just let me die before the sun comes up in the morning. We don't have deacons that's got liquor in their refrigerator. We do not have deacons that have liquor in their refrigerator. Do you know that's being accepted in some churches? I'm telling you, that's being accepted. A little bit of social drinking. A little bit of, little bit of wine cooler. A little bit of liquor every now and then. Hey, friend, we believe in total abstinence around here. Total abstinence. So what about your honeymoon? Total abstinence. What about when you're out of the country? Total abstinence. What about a wedding reception? Total abstinence. What about in the privacy of your home? Total abstinence. You can't defend it scripturally. Maybe you're here today and you've got a drinking problem. You've got a drinking issue. Tried everything in the world, but you can't stop it. You can't stop it. Get somewhere by yourself. Get somewhere by yourself when nobody's around and you're out of town. And what do you do? You run down here to the little cricket. You run down here to the little drugstore. You run down here maybe to the little Walmart. And nobody knows it. You're in the privacy of your own motel room. You got you a couple cool ones. Got you bottle of whiskey. It's not hurting nobody. Nobody knows about it. My wife doesn't even know about it. Look on up here, friend. God knows about it. God knows about it. You see, you know what's wrong with you? Let me tell you what's wrong with you. You're in bondage. You're in bondage. And I, and I know I'm not on target. I know I am. If you doubt me, you text me today. You email me this week. Tell me how long you can go without it. Tell me you can defeat it on your own. Tell me you can give it up all by yourself. Tell me when it is that you completely laid it aside. Tell me. I'll be waiting for your email. I'll be waiting for your text. But you know what? You can't. You can't. You know why? Just like the coin. Just like the coin. You need to find yourself in the hand of another, yeah. the spirit of life in Jesus Christ. It's the only thing. 
Dios. Only thing that make a difference. Let's bow for prayer. Brother David, I want you to step up there. I want you to really pray. I believe God's speaking to somebody. Everybody pray. Everybody. Dear Lord, we love you today. Thank you for back in your house again this morning. Dear God, Lord, we pray, Lord, that the seriousness of this message upon the congregation today, dear God, Lord, the way that the man of God has the past Lord. two weeks, dear God, Lord, no doubt. You're dealing with somebody's heart, dear God, Lord. Lord, help them to see, Lord, the decay in their life, dear God, Lord, the problems that's going to cause in their life and don't turn from their ways, dear God, Lord. Lord, help them to depend on you today, dear God, Lord, that you give them what they need, dear God, Lord, that they see that you're the only way, dear God, they can overcome these vices in their life, dear God, Lord. Lord, help us to depend on you and lean on you every day of our life, dear God, we wouldn't fall into these situations, dear God, Lord. We wouldn't let ourselves get set up to fail, dear God, Lord. Lord, touch in a mighty way, Lord, touch in this invitation, dear God, touch hearts. Dear Lord, let, let some young person know today, dear God, Lord, that you don't want to be out. Dear God, Lord, I know that there's destruction coming down the road, Lord, if they don't turn from the way they're going, dear God, Lord. Be with us in a mighty way, dear God, as a man of God, Lord, you lead the church. This is my prayer. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing together. Let's sing. Just stand.